In this video, we're going to take a look at the Motorola MiniDure 6 programming software. So after you've read the pager, you want to view user data. The first screen just shows you some information about the pager. There's nothing you can change on this screen. So you want to go to Model Options. And here you can select from a list of options that you can put into the pager. The first option here is the stored voice length. We recommend 60 seconds. Uh, just because you choose 60 seconds does not mean every message will take the entire 60 seconds. It will take up to 60 seconds of stored voice length. But if someone were to talk for 15 seconds, it would just store 15 seconds of message. Or if someone were to talk for 30 seconds, it'll just store 30 seconds of message. The reason being you want to use 60 seconds and not dynamic is because the 60 seconds sets an upper limit as to how long the message would be recorded. With dynamic, someone could talk for the entire 16 minutes of your stored voice length and it would erase all your prior stored voice messages. So to prevent, to prevent that from happening, you can set it to a 60 second message or 120 second. Um, 30 seconds is probably a little too short. Um, but just because you set it to 60 seconds doesn't mean you're only going to get 16 messages of 60 seconds apiece. You could get 30 messages or you could get 40 messages. just depends on how many minutes or seconds the uh, broadcaster talks. The next option is the voice announcement. Um, if you want to have a male sounding voice or if you want to have a female sounding voice. The function switch announcements, um, this is when you change the switch position from say A to B to C. The pager will um, talk to you and tell you um, what that position is. It may say selective call, tone alert, channel 1 for example. Um, this you can turn off. You can turn it on. When it's on, um, the Announcement happens when you change the knob from one knob position to the other. You can have it on plus when you press the reset button. Uh, when you press the reset button, it will announce what that uh, knob position is. Plus, it will also announce it when you change the position from say A to B or B to C. Or you can just have it announce when you press the re reset button. Um, we recommend you go ahead and just leave it to on and the only time you'll hear the announcement is when you actually change the knob position from say A to B or B to C. The battery level announcement um, can be on or off. Uh, what it does is every time you press the reset button it announces the battery status. So it'll say full battery or critical battery or um, something in between. Uh, we recommend you go ahead and turn that off. Uh, most likely you're never going to have a issue with the battery if you charge it every day. Um, if you find you're running out of battery or your battery is going dead, um, you could turn it on uh, just so you have that announcement. But for most people, you'd want to turn that off. The fixed alert um, is uh, making the page your beep at full volume all the time regardless of where the volume control knob is set. So if you were to turn down the volume control knob almost all the way down where you can barely hear the pager, when you get alerted it's going to alert at the full volume for the beeping sound but the voice that comes across will be at the knob setting volume. Now we recommend you go ahead and turn that off. Um, most people are going to either turn the volume all the way up or at a comfortable level. Uh, and so leaving it full volume all the time can be uh, rather distracting, especially if you don't want your pager to alert at extremely loudly, uh, say if you were in a restaurant or a public place. The priority scan time, the default here is 0.512 seconds. Um, we recommend you go ahead and leave that alone. Um, that's the maximum length of time that you can set the priority scan 
and still be assured that you're going to get alerted on your priority channel. The alert duration can either be standard or fixed. We recommend, we recommend you go ahead and set that to standard. Um, if you set it to fixed, you may overrun the um, first part of your dispatch message. The pager, in other words, the pager may continue to beep while the dispatcher is talking. If you set this to standard, that won't happen. Um, as soon as the tone ends, the pager will stop alerting and you can then hear your dispatcher. The unread message reminder reminds you if you have a stored voice message that you have not listened to yet. Uh, we recommend you go ahead and turn that off. Um, there is a light on the pager that will flash if you haven't read a message. And this can be kind of annoying to constantly hear a beeping sound uh, just to let you know there's a message that's been stored in your pager. Most likely you already know that. But if you want, you could turn it on. The priority tone alert, um, you'll generally want that to be off. Um, what that does is that on frequency one, the first tone set will always alert with a beeping alert rather than a vibrate alert if you set this to on. Uh, most people are not going to want to do that, so go ahead and just turn that to off. Privacy, uh, privacy disables the um, reset switch or the squelch button, some, some call that. Um, privacy would be if you don't want someone to press the reset button and listen in to the traffic that's being broadcast. Uh, generally, that's not going to be something you want, so you'd want to leave that off. Always on. Um, again, this is probably something that you don't want to set on, but if you never wanted the pager to be able to be turned off, you could set that to on. Um, in general, um, most of the people that are going to be using this pager uh, are going to want to be able to turn off the pager um, at certain times of the day or maybe when you're not on duty. But what you could do if you wanted to um, make sure, let's say you had a staff and you wanted to make sure that they didn't say, oh, I didn't get the page, you could turn the um, always on to on then you could set the fixed alert volume to on and basically the person could never turn off the pager and if they get alerted it's going to be at the full volume of the pager all the time and so you could use those two together if you needed to to make sure that someone would receive the message and they can't just accidentally turn off the pager or accidentally didn't hear the um, alert. The next tab at the top of the software is the function switches. The function switch refers to the knob on the top of the pager labeled A through H. So this is switch position A, switch position B, and so forth down to H. The mode has several options. You can choose selective call, monitor or scan. The alert type is what happens when the pager gets alerted. And this one we have set up to vibrate. You can choose push to listen uh, with the vibrate mode. Push to listen will make the pager be quiet all the time until you press the reset button to listen to the traffic. The announcement can be a standard enhanced or custom. The standard announcement is um, what you may have heard before in Minute or Fives. It'll tell you uh, the setting for each position of the switch. So as you turn the switch from say A to B or B to C, it'll tell you what that position of the switch does. The enhanced announcement tells you some additional options such as priority scan, push to listen, and then you could program into the pager your own custom announcement. A custom announcement might be uh, Fire Station 3 or EMS. So when you change the knob to position A, it would say Fire Station 3. Or if you had recorded um, 
EMS, you would hear the pager say EMS when you change the knob position. So here's an example of what the default sound, settings sound like. Selective call frequency to tone. Monitor frequency to tone. Monitor frequency one tone. Selective call frequency one vibrate. And so that's the um, way the pager will come from Motorola with the announcements. Like I said, you could record your own custom announcement. So when you change the knob position to say um, B or C or D, it'll say whatever you saved into the pager uh, back to you. So when you choose a selective call, the pager is quiet until you get paged. Then it will alert. It will alert based on what you have selected here. Tone alert means it's going to beep. Vibrate alert means it's just going to vibrate. And tone and vibrate means it's going to beep and vibrate at the same time. If you choose monitor, monitor picks up all the traffic on the channel. And if you have a multi-channel pager, you'll see F2345. So you could choose one of the other channels uh, if you have them programmed into the pager. The scan settings have three options. Uh, the first option is probability scan. What that means is you have a probability of getting paged, but you also have a probability of missing your page. Uh, so you're not going to want to choose this setting unless you're okay with missing a page on occasion. Um, it's actually pretty good. You're going to get almost all of your pages, but you're going to occasionally miss a page because the pager is going to lock on to either channel that it's scanned if there's traffic on that channel. And so you'll miss a page on the other channel that's not being monitored. This probability scan will um, scan the pager. You'll hear all the traffic all the time as it's scanning. If it gets paged or alerted, you will also hear the beep or the vibrate depending on what setting you have over here. This box shown here, you can choose the channels that you want to scan. Uh, this knob position F is set up to scan between channel 1 and channel 2. There is no priority. So if it happens to stop on channel 2 and someone's talking on channel 2, it will not hear anything on channel 1 and you will miss a page if it's stopped on channel 2. To prevent this, what you can do is choose priority scan from the list. Priority scan um, has one of the channels set to priority. And what happens with priority scan is if you're scanning between the two channels and it stops on say channel 4 and now you're listening to traffic on channel 4, it will check back to channel 1 every half second. This causes a momentary cutout of the audio as it checks back but you will never miss a alert on channel one. That's the nature of priority. Uh, when the pager does get alerted, you can choose how it alerts, tone and vibrate, vibrate, or just tone. You'll probably want to have tone and vibrate because the priority scan setting, you're going to hear all the traffic all the time, even if you're not getting alerted. The silent scan does just like it's sounds, it's silent all the time and it'll scan between the channels. If there's, uh, if there's a broadcast on one of the channels, you will not hear it unless you get an alert. So silent scan is going to be quiet all the time until you get paged. When you get paged, this is what the pager will do. You can have it vibrate, tone alert, or tone in vibrate. These are your scan channels over here. So you can select which channels you wish to scan between. And just keep in mind that you can miss uh, alerts and pages on the silent scan and the probability scan. The only scan setting that you're assured to get the page on your priority channel is on the priority scan setting shown here. 
The next tab on the software is channel F1. If you have a five channel pager, it'll say F2, 3, 4, and 5. If you just have a one channel pager, you're, you only see this tab. Uh, you will enter your frequency here. In this case, we have 154.25 entered. The channel bandwidth, you'll want to set at 12.5. Uh, 25 is wideband, this is narrowband. Um, even if you're broadcasting on wideband, which you actually should not be, everyone should be on narrowband, you'll still want to choose the narrowband. Pager works just fine on uh, 12 and a half, even if you're broadcasting on 25. The reset function is what happens when after the pager gets alerted. Uh, what does the pager do? You have several different options down here, uh, automatic, delayed, and uh, the one you should be using is revert n. This is the way it's going to come from uh, Motorola. Uh, it can be somewhat confusing what this reset function does, and I'm not going to go over all the various settings. Um, because it can be somewhat complicated, we're just going to stick with the revert N. And what happens um, on the stored voice function of the pager is the stored voice will record the message uh, until you have a drop in the carrier. Oftentimes um, the tones are sent and then there's a momentary drop. You may not even be aware of this drop, but there are oftentimes a momentary drop before the uh, dispatcher begins to talk. If you have that momentary drop after the tones are set, the pager will stop recording at that point. So in other words, you'll actually not get any recordings or you may just hear the last end of the tone recorded and you won't hear anything else afterwards. What revert N does is it fills that gap. It says, keep the pager recording for seven and a half seconds after the end of the tone alert. And this forces the pager to stay on for seven and a half seconds. Um, it's unlikely that someone on your dispatch end is going to talk for less than seven and a half seconds. It's also unlikely that you're going to have several drops or gaps in the uh, transmission frequency um, during that seven and a half seconds. So that seven and a half seconds um, is sort of a um, window that keeps the pager recording no matter what happens on your carrier. So uh, we recommend you go ahead and leave that to seven and a half. Um, that will work just fine for most departments. Um, if you're having trouble um, and you're getting the stored voice uh, announcement cut off or dropped, you could increase that. Um, if you have a lot of, say, um, alerts, you might have, say, five different stations alerted sequentially. Um, this may be too short, uh, seven and a half seconds, but for most departments, this will work just fine. And so we recommend you go ahead and leave this the way it is at seven and a half seconds, revert in. The tone system here uh, can be set to say Motorola, GE, uh, Plectron and whatnot. We recommend you go ahead and leave that at user. What this does is it makes the uh, alerting more flexible. If you choose Motorola, the Motorola tone set might be one second, three seconds. Well, what if you get a little bit of an interference in your tone and the pager doesn't quite hear the whole one second and the whole three seconds of the tone? Well, with the Motorola, it may not alert the pager because it's looking for one second, three seconds. With the user, it's going to be flexible. If you get a little bit of static on the first tone and you only hear a half a second of the first tone, and you get some noise or some static on the second tone and you only hear say one second of the second tone, the pager will still alert when you're in user mode. There's no, there is no advantage of choosing one of the other options, uh, so just go ahead and leave that at user. The coding options have um, uh, different settings here. These are carried over from a long time ago. Uh, the Miniature 2 used to have these options are 468 and whatnot. Um, it sets up the A, B tone, A, C tone, long B, long C. You really don't need that. You can go ahead and just leave that to none. And what that'll do is give you all the settings and options. 
Um, here you would enter your tone pairs. So for this example, we have tone one is 300, tone two is 500. So you're gonna have A, B, and then the pager will alert. Uh, here it would be another tone set. Um, I just call them A, Bs just to keep, just to make it easy, but it's actually labeled tone one, tone two. So you'd have a tone one, tone two, tone one, tone two, and each of these are a different set of alerts. Down at the bottom you have your long tones. This is going to be a single long tone. Um, you will typically have a long tone of about five seconds. The alert over here is how the pager is going to beep when you get alerted. Uh, standard is your typical beep, beep, beep. Um, music, uh, you can uh, have it beep in different sequences. Uh, music really isn't music, it's just a different series of beeps. If you wanted to hear what music one sounded like, you could press this button. The pager would then play whatever uh, alert type you have set here. You can also choose a custom alert. You have five different custom alerts. And what this is, is you could record any type of audio and then load it into the pager. And when this set of tones went off, in this case it's 800, 1200, the alert will be your custom alert. So you could have a barking dog, you could have some sci-fi music going on, you could have any number of things here. Um, you could record your own voice um, and whenever this tone set up went off it would alert with that setting or that noise that you had recorded. Uh, next to these um, alert settings is the vibrate setting. Uh, this is a, is a little bit different than the Miniature 5. You have standard and pulse. Uh, standard means it just vibrates, you know, vibrates the whole length of time. Pulse means it's going to vibe, 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 pulsate basically when you get alerted. Uh, if on the function switches um, you had it set to uh, say tone alert only, the vibrate would not vibrate even though you have it set here. So you do have to have on the function switch uh, say a vibrate or a tone and vibrate for the vibrate to work over here. This at the bottom is the squelch level. Um, it's best to go ahead and leave that alone at the factory setting. Uh, you could tighten or loosen this squelch setting. Um, for most people, that's really not going to be um, an issue. But if you are around um, noisy equipment, um, oftentimes a computer or other electronic devices, it may cause the pager to unsquelch on occasion. And you could use this to tighten up the squelch level a little bit. Um, it won't stop it completely. It just requires a little bit higher level of reception uh, before the pager will unsquelch. So after you have entered all your tone information and your frequency uh, on channel one, you could go ahead to and enter additional information on channel two, uh, three, four, and five if you have a uh, five channel pager. Uh, if you notice the additional channels look the same as channel one so I'm not going to go over the settings again. But one thing that is interesting to note is that you can put the entire VHF frequency range into one pager. In this case, channel 5 is set to 173 megahertz, while channel 1 is set to 154. You could even lower that down, let's say to 144. And so you could scan, for example, between channel 1 and channel 5. Channel 1 being on 144 megahertz and channel 5 being on 173 megahertz. That's uh, fairly significant in that uh, you oftentimes have odd frequencies um, that you may have in your area but the older pagers could never receive those odd frequencies. So let's say your standard dispatch is on 154. You might have uh, neighboring county, you might have a repeater, 
or you might even want to put in the uh, NOAA weather alerts on some of the other channels. You can do that now with the Minuter 6 pager. So let's go ahead and take a look at the custom audio. If you click on the bottom of the screen, uh, view custom audio, it will pop up a menu. It comes up with this um, kind of information of how to set it up, what type of file to use. I'm not going to go over that. You can read through that yourself. Um, it can be fairly complicated and difficult to actually get the correct format uh, and the correct size of file that you need. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at um, this screen which you can use to set up your custom alerts. The custom alert um, has two sections. The top section here is the beeping sound when the pager gets alerted. The bottom section is the announcement when you change the knob position from one position to another. So for example, alert one, you're, you can uh, save your own custom alert. So whenever a, uh, a page comes across, you can set that page to be alerted with your custom sound. Um, so you could browse through your uh, computer, uh, locate the file, uh, load the file into here. Um, the uh, software will then play the file. Uh, if it's a valid uh, format, um, you'll be able to hear it. Um, these that are already in here uh, are from Motorola. Um, they are, they're not intended for you to use. They're just there as a placeholder. Uh, so you can save your file, uh, either name it the same or slightly different and uh, you can then play back the file and see if you like it. So for example, that's just, again, what Motorola saved in the computer. And that's just some examples of things you could save. And you can save any audio file. You can save your own voice. You can save, say, a movie clip or a um, song. Um, when you're satisfied with how you want it to sound, you can go ahead and click that off. It will then write the pager. Uh, in other words, it'll uh, program the pager with that file that you've selected. The custom function switch announcements um, will announce what that switch position does. So when you switch from say A to B, it will then announce or it will say whatever you had recorded here in function switch, sw sw function switch position B. And so this comes in handy when you have multiple departments or you have a lot of different channels. You can record on each switch position what that channel does. Because you, you might not remember what switch position E does, but you could record um, EMS County 32 or whatever this um, channel is going to be for your pager. And when you get alerted, it's going to say, well, not when you get alerted, but when you change the knob position, it's going to say what that knob position does. So once you're satisfied with your settings here, you can go ahead and save it. And then this is where you can um, put your custom alerts from the screen that you were just at. So this alert one through five is the top section, your alerts one through five. The function switches here is the custom alert on A, the custom alert on B, C, and so forth. And that's the bottom section here. Uh, so once you've set up your pager, 
Um, it'd be a good idea to um, save this information to a file on your computer. Um, that way you have all the settings for all the different channels. Um, what this will allow you to do is it will allow you to clone additional pagers with the same information. Um, so if you had, say, 10 pagers for your department and you wanted to program all 10 the same, uh, you could go ahead and save this to the file and then you could load that file back up later and program your other pagers. The reason you want to save it and not just clone from one pager to the other is because this custom audio file is not clonable. In other words, you cannot read one pager and pull these files out of the pager and then program another pager. If you tried to do that, these would all be erased. You could clone from one pager to the other. In other words, you could read one pager and then put in another pager and program that pager. These settings would stay, so all your knob, pos knob positions and your channels, those would stay, but your custom audio will not. However, if you were to save this on a file on your computer, these custom audio uh, files are transferable from one pager to the other. So if you had um, this saved on your computer, you could then program a pager today, program another pager tomorrow, and each one of those would have the same custom alert or the custom knob setting.